Our next guest is a police officer that was too young to serve in Vietnam and too old for the Gulf War, but determined to serve his country. Bob Nappy says that in order to participate in an Iraq tra training mission, he had to quit his job with the East Haven Police Department. Blessed are the peacekeepers is his story about the sacrifices he made to serve his country and the fight he had when he returned to reclaim his life here. Welcome, Bob. Thanks a lot for uh, coming into the show today. Tell us a little bit about uh, how, it, how it all came together. I mean, you, you grew up in a military family. Your father was a World War II hero. And now when you wanted to go to Iraq, what, what led you to make that decision? Where did it go from there? Well, Colin Powell appealed to the Police Chiefs Association of Connecticut in the United States and he wanted qualified officers to help out in Iraq. So I figured I'm a qualified officer, and my country's asking, I'm there for them. All right, now when you, when you first uh, mentioned to your family that you were ready to do this, what kind of reaction did you get from your, from your friends and the family? Uh, my immediate family, I was married at the time, uh, was supportive but disagreed with my decision. Because mm -hmm. I sacrificed my whole job and my career to do this. Now why did you have to quit your job in order to do that? Couldn't they just hold your position? You were doing great, something great for the country. Couldn't they just kind of leave that opening there for you? Well, they could have given me a leave of absence, but they decided that they didn't want to let me go. Mm -hmm. The powers to be. That right that at the last minute they said they didn't want you to go, but you were already committed to going, right? I was committed to go and I was going. All right. So what happened in the year that you were over there? Tell us a little bit about that. The year that we were over there, me and a bunch of police officers across the country tried to get the police departments up and running so they can take over the security of their neighborhoods and their cities. We figured if we can do this, our soldiers could come home. What's the state of the Iraqi police over there now? Did they have, uh, are they still being trained or what's going on with that? Yeah, we were doing two things. We were training in the field, the police departments that were already functioning, mm -hmm. and training civilians to become police officers in the academy. Mm -hmm. So we were doing both of those. So you spent a year over there, right? Yes. And then you came back, and then uh, what happened when you first came back and wanted to go back for your job? I came back and they said, we're not taking you. Really? I mean, that's not much of a welcome home for a guy that just went out there and did a year trying to help our country. No, it wasn't. Oh. But the new law was created at that time, so I had some clout. Now, when you first, when you first wanted to take them on and there was a, a battle going on, um, what kind of people were on your side? Who came to your side? The public. Mm -hmm. The public was very much on my side. I got a lot of support from them. All right. Now, what about the law? Tell us how you got that going. Because, I mean, to get things going up at the state capitol, I know you've you got to move some mountains. So how were right. you able to get up there, get their attention, and actually get the law changed? Well, once they told me I had to quit to go on this mission, I said to myself, this is just not right. So I drove myself to Hartford, knocked on a few doors, and Mike Lawler, the state representative, opened up his door, and he said, you know, Bob, you are right. There, there should be something to protect these officers for volunteering and stepping up to the plate. And he created a bill. And it got passed into law while I was in Iraq. All right, well, did, but give, to, give us an idea. You know, in passing a law from the moment when you first contacted him, how did he get the wheels spinning? And then how did he have to get other people on board? I mean, it, moving a bill through that fast, how long mm -hmm. did the whole process take? I don't know. I was in Iraq, <laughs> but it took about six months mm -hmm. before I heard that it was going through. Now, when you were over in Iraq, were you like emailing him or keeping in touch? Did you have we, were, to we were keeping in touch through email. So you had a feeling that there was some hope on there. There was always some hope. Yeah. So you, but, so you knew initially when you were going over there that basically you were in a very serious situation about getting your job back when your family did re return home from Iraq. Correct. Right? So we were, it must, what was it that really made you so passionate to sit down and write a book about this? I mean, really blessed are the peacekeepers. Tell us about that. Because the men, who, the men and women who served over there and who died over there for this country deserve it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote the book, to get the story out for them because it's not only about me, it's about the whole mission and about serving our country and about helping our soldiers get out of crisis situations like this. Now, in the book itself, did you take, uh, did you have a lot of time to be able to go around and interview some of the people, get some, uh, talk to some of the other, uh, your other brothers in arms that were over there? Well, actually, the book is from, I kept a daily journal for the last five years. Really? So the book is really from the journals. Mm -hmm. My so daily journal. Daily journal, you put it all together. Now, how did you get it to the point, a lot of people want to know this too, how did you get it to the point of actually self-publishing? What was involved in that? Well, what? I had no idea how to write a book. Right. So I walked myself into Barnes & Noble and I picked out a book, How to Write a Book for Idiots. Mm -hmm. and how to Write a Book for Idiots? And I just went through that and uh, that structured my way on the way to do it. 
So and you, you and now how long has it has been out here? Blessed blessed are the peacekeepers. How how long has this book been actually out and available? Just a few months. Just a few months. Now, if people want to get a hold of this book, if you if people want to get a hold of the book, tell us uh, how they can get this. They book. can email me at my email, Bob Nappy at AOL dot com. Bob Nappy at AOL dot com. I mean, that's you're doing it all yourself. And again, if you'd like more information about Bob his story and how you can get the book, go to WTNH dot com and click on the Connecticut Style page. Bob, an honor. Thank you so much Thank for you everything so much. you've done for the country, and thanks for being here. Thank Thank you. It. All right, coming up next, cookie.